going to run out very quickly. Let me just ask you this. Can a sitting president be required to respond to a subpoena? So that's a, a hypothetical question about uh, what would be uh, an elaboration or a difference from U.S. v. Nixon's precise holding. That's right. and, and I think going with the Justice Ginsburg principle, which is really not the Justice Ginsburg alone principle, it's everyone's principle uh, on the current Supreme Court. And as a matter of uh, the canons of judicial independence, I can't give you an answer on that hypothetical question. So you can't give me an answer on whether a president has to respond to a stiff subpoena from a court of law? As my, uh, there's, my understanding is that you're asking me to give my view on a potential hypothetical, and that's something that the, every, each of the eight justices currently sitting on the Supreme Court, when they're sitting in my seat, uh, declined to decide potential hypothetical cases. I can tell you about the U.S. v. Nixon precedent, and I did about Chief Justice Berger's role in forging a unanimous opinion, and really all the justices worked together on that. But Chief Justice Berger, who had been appointed by President Nixon, and appointed by President Nixon, writes the opinion in U.S. v. Nixon, 8-0, Rehnquist was recused, 8-0, ordering President Nixon to disclose the uh, tapes in response to a criminal trial subpoena, a moment of crisis argue, argument, I think July 8th, 1974, they decided two weeks later. Uh, really important opinion. Moment of judicial independence. Important precedent of the Supreme Court. But how that would apply to other hypotheticals, I best, as a sitting judge and as a nominee, follow the precedent of the nominees who've been here before and as a matter of judicial independence, not give you a precise answer on a hypothetical that could come before me. I understand. Thank you very much for being forthcoming.